In determining whether or not to reject the null hypothesis, one method you can use is to find rejection regions. A rejection region is an area or range of values under a standard normal distribution where the null hypothesis is not probable. As a pure visual of this, here are graphs for a left-tailed, a right-tailed, and a two-tailed test. And these shaded areas would be rejection regions. And these red lines are critical values. The shaded areas are the levels of significance, noted as alpha in one-tailed tests and one-half alpha for two-tailed tests. And the critical values are often noted as Z0 for a one-tailed test and negative Z0 and positive Z0 for two-tailed tests. So let's say that you have a random sample with a sample size greater than 30 from a population. And from this sample, you calculate a sample mean, X bar. So if you found a standardized test statistic, the green line, which is often noted as Z, whose value fell in a shaded area, you would reject the null hypothesis. And if the standardized test statistic, again the green line, did not fall in a shaded area, you would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's go through an example to show how this works. Let's say you have a job offer in a city located across the country, and you're concerned about the cost of living in that city. You read a report that the mean cost of living per month in that city is $2,800. You believe this information is incorrect. You claim that the mean cost of living is less than $2,800. So you go out and gather data about the cost of living and find that in a random sample of 35, the mean is $2,690 for the cost of living per month. Assume the standard deviation is 400, the level of significance of alpha equals 0.05, test your claim. Step one is to make sure two conditions are met. First, the sample must be a random sample, and it is, as that was stated in the information given. And second, the population must be normally distributed, or n, the sample size must be greater than or equal to 30. And our sample size is 35, so that condition is met. Step two is to write out the claim and identify the null and alternative hypotheses. The claim is that the mean, mu, is less than 2,800. And we know the alternative hypothesis contains a statement of inequality. So H sub A is mu less than 2,800. The null hypothesis is the complement of the alternative hypothesis and contains a statement of equality. So H sub zero is mu greater than or equal to 2,800. Step three is to identify the level of significance, which was given, alpha equals 0.05. Step four is to determine the test to use, left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. And because the alternative hypothesis contains a less than inequality, this will be a left-tailed test. Step five is to determine the critical value or values. And since this is a one-tailed test, a left-tailed test, there will be only one critical value. Since the level of significance, alpha equals 0.05, we need to find the value for Z0 in a Z distribution table where the area to the left equals 0.05. And in that table, that value is negative 1.645. So that is our critical value. Z0. Step six is to identify the rejection region. And our rejection region is any standardized test statistic value that falls in the shaded area. That is any value that is less than Z0, which is any value that is less than negative 1.645. This is often written as Z less than Z0, so Z less than negative 1.645. Step seven is to use the formula and calculate the Z value, or the value of the standardized test statistic. And the formula for this is Z equals X bar minus mu, divided by sigma over the square root of n. And in our example, we have x bar, the sample mean, equals 2,690. Mu, the hypothesized population mean, equals 2,800. Sigma, the population standard deviation, equals 400. And n, the sample size, equals 35. So we can plug these into the formula, and we get z equals negative 1.627. Step eight is to make a decision to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. On our graph, you can see that the standardized test statistic does not fall in the rejection region, as Z, the standardized test statistic, is greater than Z0, the critical value. So in this case, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Step nine is to interpret the decision. There is not enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to support the claim that the mean cost of living in the city is less than $2,800 per month. One more example. A researcher claims the mean amount of money spent on food per household is $550 per month. In a random sample of 80 households, the mean amount of money spent on food per household was $588 per month. Assume a standard deviation of 130, the level of significance, alpha equals 0.10. Test the claim. Step one, it is a random sample, and n, 
the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. So we're good there. Step two, the claim is that mu equals 550. We know that the null hypothesis contains a statement of equality. So H sub zero is mu equals 550. And the alternative hypothesis is the complement of the null hypothesis and contains a statement of inequality. So H sub A is mu does not equal 550. Step three, the level of significance was given as alpha equals 0.10. Step four, determine the test to use. And because the alternative hypothesis contains the does not equals inequality, this will be a two-tailed test. Step five, determine the critical value or values. And since this is a two-tailed test, there will be two critical values. Graphically, this looks like this, with our critical values, negative Z naught and positive Z naught here, and both of these shaded areas in the tails being rejection regions. Since the level of significance is alpha equals 0.10, and this is a two-tailed test, each of these rejection regions will be one half of alpha, which is 0.05. And in the Z distribution table, that value is negative 1.645 and positive 1.645. So those are our critical values. Step six is to identify the rejection regions. And our rejection regions is any standardized test statistic value that falls in the shaded area. That is any value that is less than negative Z naught or any value that is greater than positive Z naught, which is any value that is less than negative 1.645 or any value greater than positive 1.645. Step seven, use the formula and calculate the Z value or the value of the standardized test statistic. And in our example, we have X bar, the sample mean, equals 588. Mu, the hypothesized population mean, equals 550. Sigma, the population standard deviation, equals 130. And N, the sample size, equals 80. So we can plug these into the formula and we get Z equals 2.614. Step eight is to make a decision to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. On our graph, you can see that the standardized test statistic does fall in the rejection region to the right, as Z, the standardized test statistic, is greater than positive Z naught, the critical value. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis. Step nine, interpret the decision. There is not enough evidence at the 10% level of significance to support the claim that the mean amount of money spent on food per household is $550 per month. All right, my friends, that be the basics on how to use rejection regions and critical values when you do hypothesis testing and you know the standard deviation. Hopefully this video helped you out. I do have more videos right there for you. Till next time, I am out of here.